Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. Some of y'all need to bury the hatchet. Now we're going from 2018 to 2019. We're moving into the Christmas holidays. And some of you are carrying stuff from the graveyard and you need to bury it. You need to bury it. You need to settle your differences. They call it burying a hatchet. You need to make peace and reconcile. You've had enough quarrels, you've had enough differences of opinion, you've had enough debates, strife, unforgiveness, bitterness, you've had enough of that. It's time for love. It's time for peace. It's time to let God bring together what has been broken for way too long. Some of you are blessed to still have your family members. And unfortunately, you get on each other's last nerve. But that doesn't mean that you're not to have a relationship. Now, there is a difference between abuse. I'm not talking about that. I am talking about people that just get on each other's nerves. Somebody said something two years ago, 20 years ago, 75 years ago. And you keep regurgitating that same old statement over and over again. If one person doesn't want to hear it, you're going to get on the phone and rehash it with somebody else. But you will not let that thing stay in the graveyard. You keep robbing the grave and pulling that old stuff up and bringing it into your present day life to spoil everything that's good right now. That's not what God calls you to do. Now listen to this scripture. This is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 and 18. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. The real interpretation of that is all things are becoming new. It's progressive. God does not want you regressing backwards. Verse 18, And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Listen, y'all. How can you sit up there and talk about how much you love the Lord and how you're following the Lord and you can't even talk to your brother or sister. You can't even go home for Christmas and visit your mother or father. There are some things they may have done that really hurt you. Some things that may have even traumatized you. But the one detail you forget about one of God's commandments in the New Testament is if you do not forgive those that offended you, God will not forgive you your trespasses. The Lord's Prayer. Lord, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory. Now, here you are claiming Christ blabbing and grabbing, raising holy or unholy hands, whatever your case is. But there are some folks you will not speak to. Really? Hmm. Now, if you have been in that situation where the guards came to get you and your friend betrayed you with a kiss and turned you in for things you didn't even do wrong, and here you're getting ready to serve a, a death sentence, having done no wrong, and check it out. One of your other buddies cuts off or shoots off their ear. What are you going to do? Just keep on stepping because they did you wrong anyway? No. If you're Jesus, you will bend down, pick that ear up, and heal and restore the ear to the person who's getting ready to crucify you. Now, if that ain't love and forgiveness, I don't know what is. But see, that's one of the things we don't like dealing with. 
We don't want to reconcile. They didn't say they were sorry. Look at how they look at me when we get in public. Well, that's their problem, not yours. You do not have to own their problem. Hmm. One of my friends told me she was my spiritual mentor. She used to tell me they don't want to talk to you. Say hi to them anyway. Show yourself to be the bigger person. You represent God, not yourself. Now you're going to go on and represent yourself. Go on and let the Lord have a break from dealing with you and go on and kick butt and cuss out and do whatever you're going to do. But don't do that and claim Christ at the same time. It's either one or the other. You have to make a choice. Now, yes, I understand hurt feelings. Oh, my goodness, if you only knew how I understood it. But every single time God enabled me, even when I could not forgive, I would ask God to give me the ability. And that's all you have to do. It's that simple. God does not require of you what he will not enable you to do. And that's what he will do. He will enable you to forgive those that are unforgivable. He will enable you to forgive those who could care less how they hurt you. He will enable you to forgive. Now, some people you forgive, you may not be able to reconcile with because they are toxic, dangerous, and abusive. We get that. I know God gets it. All right. My point is there are family members that you just don't deal with because either you don't like the fact that they seem to be quite arrogant, critical, uppity, or they got a whole lot more money than you will ever have, and you don't like the way they act around you, flaunting all of their goods. Whatever the case may be, you must forgive and reconcile. There's no threat to your safety. There's no threat to your children. There is no threat. Then you have no excuse for not reconciling, for not at least being willing. Now, if you make the first move and they reject you, that's on them. You're released from your obligation because you made the first move and you made an attempt. At that point, what do you do after that? You pray for them. Okay, Christmas holidays are coming up, y'all. 2019 is coming up. Time to bury the hatchet. Go to the graveyard and drop that crap back in the hole and bury it once and for all. Plead the blood of Jesus on it. Turn your back to it. Walk away and do not talk about it again ask God to give you the ability to do that much. God bless you as you heal. And don't forget to ask God to heal your heart so that those hurts don't have to keep doing an instant replay every time you turn around. God bless and Merry Christmas to all of you.